What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Root. So I'm going to review the debut album and basically the only mainstream album by the rapper Baby Boy the Prince. And this project is called Across the Water. And it basically came out in the spring of 2007. So basically there were a couple projects that Baby Boy the Prince did earlier, like in 2002 and 2004, 2003 and stuff. And he got a particularly large single in like the summer slash fall of 2006 with The Way I Live. And it had Lil Boozy on there, but it also had a different version of that who had another rapper on there. But this, the one that I'm reviewing, the album, the Spotify album, the album that I'm reviewing has the Lil Boozy version on here. And it's actually a pretty neat song. I definitely like the concept of this. I heard this way back in the day, but I just didn't remember it that much. And I kind of wondered what happened to this guy. I don't, I mean, I, I know at least Lil Wayne, Lil Boozy, and folks like that are from Louisiana and that type of stuff. I want to say Juvenile and possibly Birdman are from Louisiana also. Manny Fresh might be as well. But I just don't know an overabundance about, like, like Baby Boy to Prince. I just would have to say it was interesting enough because I do lightly remember, like, the lead single the way i live and i wanted to see more about this project i was almost hoping i was kind of i was kind of hoping that he would have had more projects out so i could have messed with some more of this stuff just to wonder what happened i mean there was a lot of there was a lot of kind of rappers around 2005 6 7 8 or so that were just kind of one album or one hit wonders and this guy was kind of one of those ones that was just kind of a one hit wonder now he did at least manage to put out a second single but it didn't chart at all and that basically just meant that he was just like a typical kind of ringtone rap and snap rap and that type of stuff dirty south kind of rapper that just kind of came and went pretty immediately and i just would have to say the concept about it there is some stuff to be found here and you'll be surprised i would definitely have to recommend a good chunk of songs off this album this is definitely chock full of pr pretty good stuff but it does kind of have an acquired taste about it i think with my taste i've had i have an acquired sense of being able to appreciate productions that are not quite i mean it's not like these productions are bad but some of them like certain songs like fist rock and lock me down and slide in slide out and some of those type ones have a little bit more kind of just stark production and more minimalist that this kind of i mean it, it just kind of feels like this was definitely a debut album for an up-and-comer but he he may not have like full-blown got exploited the way he needed to but i do kind of feel like this is at least a pretty rock solid debut it's actually going to get a pretty rave score i just would have to say there's a number of good tracks on here that just surprised me for a debut where i feel like this is better than some rappers like prime albums at least in terms of like certain musicians i just would have to say so if folks think this guy doesn't have the lyrics down and he's not like, you know, he's just a ringtone rapper and he's part of the, the hip hop is dead movement and that type of stuff. I just would have to say, eh, you know, there, there is some gems on here. He may not be like Method Man, Ghostface Killa, uh, Raekwon, those type people, but I do feel like he definitely has some quality songs. That's just definitely the thing. The definite two singles are just jams and bops and they just slap pretty damn hard i just would have to say but so we'll go ahead and talk about the singles the first single was the way i live and this features little boozy on there this is just really like a southern fried kind of song and this is not just atlanta or texas or like uh florida or something like that this is kind of like this is really Louisiana kind of sound. This just really feels like twang kind of sound. This is really kind of lively, kind of summery, kind of this bayou kind of music and that type of stuff. I just would have to say this really feels like something, you know, this that kind of context. It's very Southern fried in that sort of situation. It's, it's interesting kind of get. It's just such a lazy day kind of song. It's just such a lazy kind of breakfast kind of song. I feel like it's a very calm morning kind of song. Definitely a starter song for the day and just a lazy kind of breakfast kind of song. It just has a lot of interesting kind of mellow kind of guitar licks in here that are just very light and calm in a lot of ways. So I, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but this really is the context of this. It's just a charmer. I just really like the context of it. It has... It's a pretty large hit, and Lil Boozy is crafted for this song perfectly. The two of them really tear this song apart, and they just do a great job. They don't have to be super lyrical, and it just kind of comes off with, like, 
and this kind of comes off of the context of this is kind of i can definitely see this as being a pretty quality ringtone kind of song it just has like a real catchy chorus and these were the kind of songs that happened back in the day back when rap music was kind of charting with that sort of heaviness and especially the southern music this had an inescapable hook and it just really kind of delivered on that front but I think just because this song was so quotable and so chart ready and so affable and stuff, that's kind of a contribution as to why the second single, Na Main, didn't work out that well. But it at least tried. And I'll, we'll talk about that now. So, I mean, the, the thing with Na Main, the second single, not charting, it's the typical kind of fanfare that kind of happens, which I've described on some described on so many albums where the lead single will be like this hooky kind of recitable kind of meme type song like this is the way i live and that type of stuff just kind of a quotable phrase that you can see yourself saying to your buddies and that type of stuff and just memeing about and gossiping about and that type of stuff but i feel like na mean doesn't quite have that quite as surreptly but na mean is the second single and it's a pretty decent and kind of rousing weekend cut and i feel like the energy is kind of mid on here but it just kind of works as like a pretty decently rousing thumper in terms of that dance club kind of energy it just really has that kind of boppish kind of tune towards it it's not quite as large and as massive as like the dance club cut that should have happened but i think compared to how baby boy to prince was able to put out like a very sly and kind of sluggish first single and it wasn't a club song that was the first single that hit that heavily it just made sense for the follow-up single to be kind of like a high mid-tempo kind of dance club bop. It's just too bad that it didn't catch on better. Maybe it had to do with the hook, but I feel like it's just a lazy kind of southern drawl kind of song that just really has like a lot of charisma and swag and that type of stuff on there, but it's just uh, for some reason it didn't catch on at all. I mean, Manny Fresh was at the very beginning of the song and he wasn't on it that much, but I really feel like it had like a nice context as far as being able to kind of say that that's just kind of a nice one-two punch, but the it's just the problem with it is I feel like a lot of folks would probably feel like this song is kind of mid. The beat is good, but it's just not quite as, like like I said, as massive as probably what it needed to be. So, But it is a pretty, I think this could kind of get some asses shaking and some rousiness kind of going about it. This has a decent rouse towards it, so that's one to not overlook, but it's just not quite as front runner as like it it probably needed to be so kind of talk about the rest of this album there's 14 songs on here there's if you get the cd version there's actually 19 songs on here with the bonus track but the thing about it is is there's three skits plus an intro that's kind of like a skit or just not much of a song so that slashes for them so it'd be 15 songs and then the spotify version which i'm reviewing the the 19th song which is supposed to be y'all already know you already know becomes just like the way I live with the other cat on there that was on the way I live. So it narrows it down to 14 songs. So out of those 14 songs, I'm going to recommend 10 of them. I, yeah, I like quite a bit of songs on this project. So the 10 songs would be the way I live, slide in, slide out, nah mean, Marrero, they don't know, fist rock, do what to do, good jug, the almost song is rich boy and then the and well song number nine would be monday tuesday wednesday the proposal song and then the almost song would be rich boy so it's actually nine and a half but um yeah there's just some really good moments on here i just really particularly like this kind of affable but still kind of lazy southern draw so if you need another song like the way i live i definitely kind of feel like uh Rich Boy is one to kind of do that. That's a nice kind of lazy kind of bop. This is definitely kind of a feel-good daytime bop, and it's kind of a hustle song at that, so it's kind of about getting money and getting to it. But I kind of feel like it's very similar to Jeezy's My Hood from his Thug Motivation 101 album. It just has that kind of peppy and kind of browsy, this kind of got a grin on your face, kind of feel-good kind of tune about it, so I do like the concept behind that. I feel like Good Jug is kind of a hookup song. This is a nice saucy and summery kind of tune for hooking up with women and that type of stuff. It's kind of in the midst of it, I would have to say, so that's a nice one. Do What It Do and Marrero are both two crunk-ready club-type cuts on here. 
where I really feel like do what to do is a particular synthy kind of one, definitely for a night out and kind of flashy. And both of these are posse songs, both Marrero and do what to do are both, they have multiple rappers. Now, none of these folks are really particularly noteworthy, but they're both two pretty rock solid club cuts that just kind of have that particular energy. They're both kind of thuggish and just kind of more stunting and flexing and flashy type ones, but they sound similar. Marrero and do what to do sound pretty similar. Uh, Fist Rock is kind of a vanilla club cut. Fist Rock has a lot of bravado in the production towards it, but I definitely feel like this is a vanilla nightclub kind of song. Very typical, but it does have some low-key catchiness. I really like the emphasis behind it. This is like a stock kind of one. This is kind of one of the songs I feel like has a learning curve, and that's kind of why I gave Rich Boy... The, the, the song Rich Boy I was talking about that was like Jeezy's My Hood. That's kind of why I gave Rich Boy an almost song because that one kind of has a learning curve in terms of the lackadaisical and this kind of minimalist production. Fist Rock was kind of one in borderline almost song territory, but I did wind up liking it more enough to be able to say I don't think that that one's an almost song. It's close, but it's not. So I feel like that's kind of the concept. Another song that was almost an almost song was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the proposal song. This is a really kind of smooth song, definitely a halfway soulful and ladies cuts, very emphatic. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is trying to get like a uh, baby boy to Prince on his ghost face killer type vibes and the stuff that Joel Santana and Lil Wayne kind of do and that type of stuff. It's interesting kind of get that sample heavy almost kind of stuff and it kind of works, but I don't know, it, just, it was not quite pulled off with this. I mean, this is not an almost song, but it's just kind of almost borderline in that territory where I feel like it was pulled off pretty decently, but somehow it maybe, I don't know, it's just the effects of it, I'd probably give like this song like a 7 out of 10 instead of like an 8 or a 9 out of 10. It's just kind of, or it feels like it's emphasized, but it's not quite as excellent in comparison to how some of that went. I think the soulfulness is kind of there, but I would give Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday like a 7 out of 10 in terms of score, just because I do like the effects of it, but it just didn't quite hit me as heavily as I would have liked it to. I do think it's a good one. It's just kind of halfway decent in there, so I just maybe I just need to get used to it more to up the score a little bit, but at least at this point, it's a good song, and I don't think it's an almost song i just need more time with it and then like slide in slide out is kind of like and then slide in slide out was like a very nice midday kind of summer tune for chicas and that type of stuff just getting some women and browsing them around and that type of stuff is just kind of the concept of just being in and out with women just like the song says i kind of like the concept of just like a pretty midday kind of just summer energy type tune for that sort of thing this definitely works pretty well and uh, I think that about covers it. Oh yeah, there was They Don't Know. Another another song that had particular, uh, another song that had particular crossover potential. It's too bad that uh, Baby Boy the Prince didn't try to make this song a single, but it has Nina Sky from, the, those are the chicks that did the hit song Move Your Body way back in 2003, 2004. But he scoops them up for the hook on this song. It's just a very kind of, pop rap-ish kind of r b type too and i definitely found like it was similar to dilemma by nelly it has that same kind of approach and style towards it it's just a little bit more of a bop though or dilemma was kind of more of like a lazy kind of summer crooning kind of song but this one's a little bit more boppish and has more jive towards it so it's definitely kind of a nice crossover bop but it just that's the context about it it's just kind of it's a crossover song with some edge towards it so that's just kind of the concept about it but so yeah, to talk about some of these ones that I didn't enjoy, like I kind of feel like there were just some weak beats with like Rose. There were some weak beats with Rose and Who Sheed and like Lock Me Down and Roll Into Debt. I just kind of feel like some of these just were not, I mean, this album kind of has like a stark production kind of value where not all of these jump off the page and you have to kind of, like I said, have an acquired taste and a more, yeah, like a, like I said, you kind of have to have more of an acquired taste and kind of a sharper learning curve for getting used to some of these things just because the context of them is just kind of, it, it's not quite as big budget and quite as flabbergasting as like it probably needs to be. But I do feel like there are some ones on here that kind of have that, but probably some of the best beats on this album would be like the lead single, The Way I Live, the second single, Na Mean. And then like songs like Do What It Do and Marrero and some of those. But for the most part, there are some ones that do kind of feel stock and they just kind of feel like either 
like a rich rapper's kind of mixtape cuts that are kind of free songs or they just feel like a rapper who doesn't really have like a biography page on Wikipedia. This is a more low key, someone who'd sell like 10,000 copies first week or 5,000 copies first week or something like that. That's just kind of the concept about it. But I do kind of feel like, you know, the productions on here are decent. It's just kind of the concept that they just have a learning curve, especially. So I'm going to go ahead and score this album, me liking nine songs, nine and a half songs out of 14. I'm going to go ahead and give this album like an 8.75 out of 10. Like, I feel like that's pretty rock solid. That's definitely within the territory of something where it's like paramountly special in a lot of ways, especially for a rapper that would just, that just kind of came and went, and didn't have like any real territory, any grounds that he gained for the most part. I just would have to say that there were some surprising things on here. And for an artist and a musician that only got one true hit and then disappeared the same year that he came out, I just would kind of have to say and stuff that there are some surprising factors on this project. I mean, it doesn't have an overabundance of huge guests. I mean, Lil Boozy, Manny Fresh, Nina Sky are on here. But for the most part, it's pretty, it's just, it's not so much insular, but it's just kind of in-house in a lot of ways. It's pretty central around Louisiana and that type of stuff. Almost feels local, but I do like the concept of some of the quality about this project. I do feel like like some of the best beats on here, like I, I, I know that like Fist Rock is kind of like really stock and vanilla. And there's other ones like Rich Boy and yeah, this song's like, Fist Rock and Rich Boy and some of those type ones that just kind of have more stark productions and that type stuff and even Lock Me Down and some of those. But I just would have to say overall, yeah, it's, it's just worth looking into. You just have to be willing to take the plunge and take the chance. I think that's really like the concept about it. I mean, really, if like it bothers you that like it's not so much about like if, if you're more leaning towards the lyric side, then yeah, this might be kind of one but i feel like you know ringtone rap is something to be appreciated and this definitely slaps and this is definitely something that a lot of women would probably wind up dancing to definitely for stepping out getting crunk and that type of stuff there are some drinking songs too bad there's not really a smoking song on here but it just is kind of like guilty pleasure kind of music and weekend kind of music that just has accessibility that's pretty much off the meter and i think that's just kind of the concept especially just because the louisiana sound is not something that's overtly kind of appreciated like lil wayne had was from louisiana but he kind of grafted to like miami and like other southern fried type stuff it wasn't just strictly new orleans type sound so really this is kind of an actual taste of local louisiana that type of stuff and this uh, di a, a new kind of shade of dirty south hip-hop that this wasn't appreciated enough so that's definitely something to have as far as an interesting kind of atmosphere to kind of do so i just look after it and um but yeah it gets an 8.75 out of 10 the social score i'm gonna go ahead the social score i'm gonna give a 9 out of 10 just because i feel like some of these on here definitely the two singles are worth looking into there are some other quality cuts like rich boy there are some other quality cuts like rich boy fist rock do what to do marrero good jug monday tuesday wednesday and the surprising fact about it is there's just a number of cuts on here that are kind of crafted for ladies interactions i feel like this is definitely kind of a play a type kind of album a more suave album and that type stuff definitely more than two or three cuts on here designated to ladies i mean you've got good jug You've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You've got Lock Me Down. You've got, uh, there's another one on here, like, uh, there's Good Jug, there's Rose, there's They Don't Know, there's um, Lock Me Down, Slide In, Slide Out. So there's just a number of tracks for the ladies on here that kind of make it a pretty suave kind of play a type play a type type project and that type of stuff so i would have to say it's another good thing about a social score gets a nine there's just some good bops on here just nice kind of stuff probably if anything i would have liked just more songs like fist rock and nah mean i definitely feel like that's a good edge towards it just to kind of get these but i like these kind of vanilla and stock factory made kind of club cuts there just weren't enough of them it's really too got it's really too bad that this guy disappeared as quickly as he did is because 
the way I live was such a hit single and that worked and that was a nice touch also but it's just kind of the concept that it's just so short-lived it's just too bad about that but in terms of the future that's difficult just because baby boy the prince has virtually disappeared so I don't know what happened to this guy but I would have to say that this I would have to say that this project is worth looking into but it's just kind of the concept so just dissect some of this and find some good stuff and don't listen to the 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 reception of saying that ringtone rap sucks and the reception of this project if you have found that it's poor because this isn't a poor project you just have to have acquired taste